Welcome to HSC Economics Made Easy. Last lesson, we introduced the markets topic and then we focused on demand. We explained that quantity demanded has a negative correlation on price and then we looked at some of the influences on demand. Today we will look at the concept of price elasticity of demand. In this context, you can think of the word elasticity as being synonymous with the word sensitivity. As in, price elasticity measures the sensitivity of demand to a change in price. When quantity demanded has a strong reaction to price change, we call that price elastic demand. When quantity demanded has a weak reaction to a price change, we call that price inelastic demand. A proportional reaction is called unit elastic. What does price elasticity look like in a demand curve? A more price elastic demand would be flatter because as you can see, a small change in price leads to a large change in quantity demanded. It's very sensitive. A more price inelastic demand would be steeper. It takes a large change in price for a small movement in quantity demanded because it's very insensitive. Why is price elasticity important to consider for a business? Well, put yourself in the shoes of a business owner. If you know that your customers are very sensitive to price, you can lower your price because a small change in price will attract so many customers that you end up making more money. Conversely, if demand is price inelastic, you could increase your price because you know that even when your prices increase, you won't lose customers. And that's how you could maximize your total revenue. This also applies to government taxes on certain goods and services. Let's look at the tax on cigarettes. Governments could say that the tax is to reduce smoking by contracting demand. But if smoking is addictive, the demand is price inelastic. So even with a large increase in price, there won't be much of a reduction in smoking. Instead, it raises revenue. So governments can say the tax is to reduce smoking. But how high must the tax be? And how much revenue must be raised before consumer behavior is actually changed? So the same question can be asked for carbon taxes and petrol taxes. Does it actually change consumer behavior or is it revenue raising? Now that we've learned the implications of price elasticity of demand, let's talk about how to calculate it. There are multiple ways of calculating elasticity, so let's get into it. In the old economic syllabus, there was a method called the coefficient method. You may still come across this method in some textbooks. It involves using this formula that calculates the movement of quantity as a proportion of the movement in price. If the coefficient is greater than one, it means that a small change in price caused a large change in quantity, so it's elastic. If it's one, it's unit elastic. If it's lower than one, it's inelastic. Because this method is no longer in the current syllabus, I'd like to move on and spend more time in the next method called the total outlay method or total revenue method. As stated earlier, the implications of price elasticity is that it could affect the revenue raised. So we can work backwards and use revenue to figure out elasticity. Total revenue is calculated by multiplying quantity by price. As mentioned in my earlier examples, if demand is price inelastic, a price increase would cause an increase in total revenue. This is because inelastic means that consumers are not sensitive to price changes and will mostly continue to buy the product. Conversely, if demand is price elastic, a small increase in price will lose so many customers that the total revenue will fall. To sum it up, if total revenue moves in the same direction to a change in price, it's price inelastic. If it moves in the opposite direction, it's price elastic. Total revenue remaining constant means that it's unit elastic. The way I remember this is that inelastic is when they move in the same direction. As I mentioned before, one more way of determining elasticity is by looking at the slope of the curve. Note that you can't use the gradient to calculate elasticity because as seen with the last example, even with a straight line, the elasticity varies along the curve. However, you can use it to compare between demand curves. And also there are two extremes that we can recognize straight away. When the curve is completely vertical, demand is perfectly price inelastic. This means that consumers are willing to pay whatever price to get a certain quantity. A simple example would be a heart transplant. If you need one, no matter what the price, you'll pay for it so that you can have one. The other extreme is when the slope is completely flat. This is perfectly price elastic demand, and it means that consumers will only accept one price. A simple example would be fruit and vegetables because of how many substitutes are available. If one producer tries to increase their price, demand for them would drop straight to zero. If they try to lower their price, every other producer would do the same. So price is pretty much fixed for this market. The way that I remember the difference between the two is that when the curve is steeper and more vertical, it's like the letter I, and I stands for inelastic. 
The last question that I want to answer today is, what determines the price elasticity of demand? Here's a list of factors. The first one is whether the good is a luxury or necessity. Consumers will do without it when the price increases, so they are price elastic. Necessities, like heart transplants, are price inelastic because consumers need to consume it regardless of the price. Further to this, some goods become necessities because they are habit-forming or addictive. That's why when we discuss the cigarette tax, we establish that the demand for cigarettes is price inelastic. Smokers buy them regardless of the price. Also, when a good is a complementary good, it's also treated as a necessity. A complementary good is a product that is typically used in conjunction with another product, like petrol cars and petrol. If you've got a car, you're going to buy petrol regardless of whether it's expensive or not, and that makes it price inelastic. Another factor to consider is whether there are close substitutes. If there are many substitutes for the product, then even a necessity would have price elastic demand. That's because if there's an increase in price, the consumers would buy the substitute instead, making them very sensitive to price changes. That's why I used fruit and vegetables in my earlier example. There are so many substitutes, so the demand becomes very price elastic. The next factor is the expenditure on the product as a proportion of income. Let's compare chewing gum with a car. If a $1 stick of chewing gum increases its price by 10% to $1.10, you'd still buy it. It's price inelastic. But if a $30,000 car increases its price by 10%, that's an extra $3,000, which is enough to turn off many consumers. So demand for cars is comparatively more price elastic. The last factor to look at is the length of time subsequent to the price change. In the short term, products are price inelastic. For example, if you're desperate for chewing gum, but upon arriving at the counter, you find out it's doubled in price, you're still likely to buy it because you need it. But if you were given more time, you would shop around for a cheaper alternative in response to this price change. In summary, demand is more inelastic in the short term, but becomes more price elastic because you will have more time to respond to the price change and find substitutes. I hope that I've made price elasticity of demand easy for you to understand. Next lesson, we're going to begin looking at supply. The terminology that we've used while learning about demand will be used for that topic too. Click the subscribe button as well as follow us on Facebook to make sure you don't miss any future videos. If this video has helped you, please leave a like and comment as well as share the video. And I look forward to continuing to make HSC Economics easy for you. See you next time.